Hi, this is Ron Ball. Welcome to Choose Greatness, your key to a happier life. Now, who doesn't want to have a happier life? That is something that is immediately connectable to everybody. You want to have a better life for you and your family. Well, God's principles make that immediately possible because God wants you to have an abundant life. You know that Jesus said in John 10, 10, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly, overflowing with power and freedom. Well, that's the purpose of this show, to give you God's principles that really work. Now, I am excited to have a special guest today. Uh, Courtney Shaw, Courtney Don Shaw, I'll get the entire name in, uh, is um, a former Mrs. Florida. I say former because it wasn't that long ago, Courtney. I think you just uh, had your uh, reign just a couple of years ago. And uh, she is a wonderful Christian uh, with a solid family. And it's a tremendous honor to have her. And I know those of you watching today are very curious about Christians in public life. Well, you're going to get a window into that today. Isn't that exciting? So I want you to call somebody right now and let them know about this show. Get on the phone really fast. Get your cell out. Let people know uh, as quickly as you can to tune in right now. Uh, you can use social media. You can text someone. You can do a tweet. Whatever you need to do, just let them know that there is a special show happening right now and they need to tune in. So, Courtney, welcome to this show. Thank Mrs. You, Florida. What a, what a cool thing. And I, I was, of course, joking with the film crew earlier that I want to make sure nobody thinks I'm Mrs. Florida with all this <laughs> paraphernalia on the table, but Ron, it's really you. It's my paraphernalia. <laughs> I will take full responsibility for the paraphernalia on well, the table. Well, I want to hear all about your life story, your witness for Christ, but first, you got to give us some insight into how this happened. G give us the story. Wow. Well, Ron, it was a total God thing. I think I, there's a running theme through really everyone's life and especially mine, and that's my steps are ordered by the Lord. Amen. And I truly believe when we surrender our lives to Christ, he will take us in spaces and places we never dreamed oh, beautiful. of. Beautiful. And never in my life as a young woman, if you would have told me that I would have been crowned Mrs. Florida when I had been married for, you know, 12 years at the time <laughs> and had two small children, I would have never thought that would be in God's um, plan for my life. And so it was one of those things where you, when you step out on obedience, there's a way of blessing. And, and so many times we want to look at the bigger vision and the bigger picture in, in life and we've got to back into it. And sometimes it's that first action step where God says, take a step here, trust me. <laughs> yes, it's going to be out of your comfort zone. Yes, if you start looking and you know through your eyes of your flesh, you might run the opposite direction. But if you trust me, and you get out of the way, I'll do things to use you for Amen. my glory. And so how this happened, my husband and I, um, we had been married for probably eight years at the time, and we co-authored a national health and wellness curriculum. It's called Fit to be Free Movement, and it's about enjoying your total health and liberty in Christ. Oh, that's good. And we had such a passion to help um, really the believers understand that God created your body to glorify Him. Um, he created the temple and gave you this amazing vehicle um, to be able to touch people for His kingdom. And it's so important that we take care of it, um, not worship it, but take care of it so we can be fit to fight the good fight of faith. And so we authored this curriculum, and that was an obedience thing and uh, wrote that tag team authored that and we started to speak and we got asked to come on television shows and that led to me hosting a show and having a lady that mentored me and she said Courtney have you ever thought about running for Mrs. Florida and God uses people Ron I mean so many times we want God to drop something out of the sky and say yes Lord it's me you know and not really that moment it really happens in my life it's always been through people and this girl saw something in me she said, you know what? I think you ought to try this and take Fit to be Free to the next level. And that's exactly what I did. I went, did my research because, of course, being a beauty queen as a mother was almost hysterical to me. I literally laughed in her face when she told me to do it. <laughs> I said, I may laugh now, but I'm going to check into it. And I ended up actually reaching out to a lady that was Mrs. Florida. She became Mrs. America and Mrs. World. And her platform was to work with World Vision because both of her children oh, were diagnosed yeah, with yes. RP. Her children were going blind. So she was a mom on a mission and she said you know what I see this beauty pageant this sash and this crown as a tool I see it as a platform to go help my children get the kind of research that they need and so I sat down with her for about an hour and I grilled her my husband and I both did and I said you know what there's something to this and I said okay God with anything I'm gonna lay it at your feet 
I want you to bless it and we'll trust you. And that's exactly what happened. I had two months to prepare. Two we months. got everything sponsored. Two yes, yes. <laughs> you got to be ready in season and out, right, Ron? <laughs> And so I got all the right mentors around me, all the right team. My husband was on board. My parents were on board because I had two small children. Right. And, you needed um, help. Uh, I need a backup stat, okay? <laughs> I know it takes a village, and it truly does, especially if you have a public calling. Um, you have to have a good team to cover you and your family and your That's marriage. That's a great point. It is. And so I went through it. I got called out top 10. I got called out top five. I, I went through all of my interviews, and they were just God-ordained. And what I realized, God had brought me into a mission field. Pageantry was a mission field. Now, now there explain that a little more. Oh my, Ron. When I stepped in, and, and it was also a test for me because I'm going, here I am, a grown behind woman. Why am I going to put myself in a position to be rejected? Am I out of my mind? I mean, I've grown past this. And all of these women came from different backgrounds. Some of them were actually thinking about going through divorce when they were in a married pageant. Um, you know, so many of them were battling with insecurities and they thought if I could, you know, just now, focus now, on the outside. Can I interrupt you just for a moment? Please you said do. they were battling insecurities. Now, these are, yes. these, these are beautiful, beautiful women. women. So, so oh my gosh. what prompted their, how, what did you see in them? Well, listen, we all know the secret key to good success is Jesus Christ, Amen. our Lord and King. He is the only one that can fill those spaces and places and gaps and voids that this world cannot fill. It doesn't matter if it's a title, um, if it's stuff, it's things. All of that stuff is temporal. But I knew that I was packing the goods. So when I walked in there, I said, okay, God, <laughs> I'm going to use what you got. I've had two babies and I'm looking at these women. Everything's pulled tight and upright. And I'm like, oh God, why are you doing this to me? He goes, die to that. I, am, uh, I want to speak through you. You're my vessel. And if you be obedient, I'm going to do a great work. So I literally ended up ministering to these women all throughout the pageant week. You know, that's fascinating. Can you give an example, not to reveal anybody's yeah. identity, but just an example of one of your encounters with one of the other you women? No, it was something as simple. I'll think about this. I had arrived at the, the venue for the pageant, and there was a girl that was trying to check into our hotel. And we had already done everything ahead of time, and everything was smooth for me in my check-in. And this lady, you know, I looked at her, and I knew that she was going to be in the pageant, and she just seemed frazzled and she had three small children with her. Her husband wasn't there yet. And she goes, oh my God, I've checked into the wrong hotel. Now, if I was some <laughs> cutthroat, fleshly pageant girl, all competitive, I'd been like, ha, ha, ha. That's, you know, rough for her. But no, the spirit of the Lord in me was like, help, help her. And I said, you know what? I have the lady's number. You, you checked into the wrong hotel. You booked the wrong hotel, but I know she can get you your situation corrected. So I gave her her phone number and it was just that first moment of exchange to say, I'm here to serve. I'm here to help. I'm not here to compete or to compete. I'm here to compliment, to encourage, and lift others up and show them who Jesus is. Well, you and know, you, you, uh, you reminded me of something very important. I want to mention this to all of our, our watchers, all of our viewers. Um, one of the most deadly things that you can ever allow in your life, and this relates to what Courtney just said, it is deadly for you to be selfish. It is deadly for you to think of yourself. I have a great friend who is a phenomenal business leader, incredible man with tremendous financial success. And I once asked him, how did you build such a financial empire as a Christian? And he said, well, one thing I did, he said, I never thought about myself. I only thought about service. I only thought, how do I help people? God will trust you more if you're focused on being a servant. Jesus said, I've come as one who serves. The Son of God was a servant. So it sounds to me, Courtney, like you had a servant spirit and God Amen. honored that. So, so keep on with your story. So just through that, there was just so many God encounters throughout that whole weekend, even with my judges were God ordained and the conversations that I had. And I knew that God had prepared me. And I believe there's a prepared place for prepared people. And I don't think if I had, hadn't gone through everything that I had gone through up until that point, I wouldn't have been prepared to mm. be able to carry this reign um, for God's glory and to carry it with grace and and to be a humble servant and not feel entitled or feel the pressure or the weight of the crown or or the, all the things that come with it. And so there were so many examples throughout that weekend. But, you know, Ron, it was one situation um, in particular that happened where I just saw this girl breaking down. And, and it was in the back. We were changing. We we're getting ready to go out and do this and that. And I just stopped and I paused and it was supernatural peace over me. And I just began to pray mm -hmm. over her. And it was an opportunity to minister the love of God, the healing power of God and the freedom of God. And, and it was just one of those things. And so through that process, um, I got called out, called out for top three. And, and I knew when I spoke and cast my vision for the rain that it was God ordained. I just knew it in my spirit. Well, what, and, what was um, the moment like when you won? 
What oh, was that it like? was so awesome. So they called the husbands up because it was a Mrs. Pageant. Right. Here I'm standing with, and my husband came up, and I think my husband was more excited than I was, honestly. <laughs> Jeff is my number one cheerleader, and when we, we've always done everything together as a team. We minister as a team. If I'm into something, he's 100% there, too. And so they, they put the crown on my head, and they started playing this song called Happy. And I was like, <laughs> wow, we made a choice to choose Happy because, Ron, if you knew our testimony and what God had brought us through and what he had brought us to, Oh my, I mean, people did not know the weight of that moment for my husband and I. And we laughed and we danced and we cried and we celebrated because this was God's victory. And we knew that he had entrusted us with a great responsibility to be a blessing for his kingdom. Well, amen. And that's amen. beautifully expressed, Courtney. And God bless you. You just project mm -hmm. that happy, positive energy. So amen. that's an appropriate song that you had for yes, that moment. It was. Now, yes, now it was. during the course of your reign, mm -hmm. Uh, did you have opportunities to be a witness for Christ during that time? Oh man, it just, any time it was, you know, God uses things as magnets. I'm telling you, it, the, the anointing on someone's life can be attractive, but when you walk in the room with a sash and a crown, it's like having like laser beams on your lights flashing. Like, <laughs> the woo, spotlight woo. is on you. Literally, and it's a huge responsibility, but there was not a time. And of course, there's all these preconceived notions that come with being a beauty queen and oh, she's stuck up or she thinks she's better than. And, and I'll tell you what, I, one of my favorite parts about my testimony during my reign is at the very end, I had to give up my crown and to a, to another girl and I passed and I got to keep this one. Um, but it literally was wobbling. I mean, you can oh, see so, it. So, I don't so, know if you can see this crown. Excuse me, this is the This crown. is my Mrs. Florida crown. This actually crown. is the crown. Yes, it well, is. Well, isn't this special? Did everybody see that? That's yeah. really great. So the cool thing about this crown, if you can look at it, it is literally, literally about to fall apart. <laughs> I have duct tape on the back of it holding together. And even my sash was just it was so filthy and so torn by the end of that year because of all the people I hugged, mm. because of all the people I prayed for, because of how many little girls and women I put that crown on. Because the word of God tells us that we, you know, the world goes off after a perishable crown, but we go after an imperishable crown. And I remember when I gave my life to the Lord at 17, I said, God, I want to lay so many crowns at your feet. What you've done for my life, how you've set my soul free from depression, from suicidal thoughts, from eating disorders, from low self-esteem. God saved me radically, Ron, at a young age. And, and I just wanted to serve him and honor him. And that was the biggest testimony for me. Is that I said, you know what? I don't want to get this dry clean. I don't want to <laughs> get this fixed because this represents a rain well run. And I wanted to hear at the, at the end of my reign, well done, that good and faithful servant. And <laughs> so I believe th that this I is like your battle weapon. This amen. Is like a, amen. We're going to war. Some people have, David well, had the stones and the sling. One, one thing the crown you and the mentioned sash. that really touched me just a moment ago, and, and you've said several things that have touched mm -hmm. me, so God bless you. But one thing I think that all of you listening picked up on was the genuineness that Courtney mm -hmm. projects because you've been through some things oh, yeah. and we're going to get to that in just yeah. a moment, but you're also an example. And I want you to, all of you watching to, to get something very important. I was talking recently to a well-respected researcher uh, who examines a lot of movements in the country mm -hmm. and analyzes them. And he said something to me that blew me away, totally amazed me. He said that a number of years ago, Christians pulled out of Hollywood. They mm -hmm. just pulled out. And it left the entertainment industry mm -hmm. with people who were not godly. And so that became a tremendous damage to our culture. I mean, think how many little girls get their image, how many little boys get their image of life from movies so true. that are not, don't have a Christian worldview <laughs> and consequently live lives based on that, that break apart. Mm -hmm. Well, this man said that when that happened, he said that was something that was a disaster for Christian influence mm -hmm. in this country. He said, however, there is an area of powerful Christian witness in this country. He said, it's sports. He said, Christians didn't leave sports. That's right. and now you hear all these public witnesses of sports mm -hmm. figures. Well, in a sense, you're kind of in a hybrid of sports and entertainment. Oh, it's competitive. Because, because I'm it's, telling because you, it's, it's a lot through. like that. <laughs> but what, what I'm getting, what you're saying is, and I want all of you to listen to this for your children, is that if you commit yourself to excellence, if you excel, if you if your kids love sports and they're good at sports, if you have a, a, a little girl who loves pageants or loves sports or so, I mean, if they're good at that, mm -hmm. then you can encourage them and you can help them. Not, not that that takes over their life. That's right. That can be obsessive and we know that. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you need to pray over your children whether God is wanting to prepare them for a witness in this mm -hmm. arena. Because 
from what you've said, Courtney, this wasn't about you. No. This was about God using you, which is so much more powerful. So I want you to rear your children to be leaders. I want you to rear your children to be great. I want you to rear your children to make a powerful impact for God. And Courtney is an example of that because when you were on the road mm -hmm. uh, everywhere, uh, it became pretty obvious, I would say, that you were a Christian after a while. Oh, no doubt. I mean, I loved opportunities. And I, I love one of the scriptures in the Word talks about God will take the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. <laughs> and to me, there was nothing more foolish than a 32-year-old beauty queen. You know, you're like, this is pretty crazy. But I loved it because it was a door opener. And if I had a mic in my hand or I had an opportunity to hug someone, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water oh, springing up to everlasting life. Amen. So as we're connected to the source and we get out of the way and we die, to ourselves daily. God's love can reign and rule oh, through amen. us. And people are longing for the manifestation of the true sons and daughters of God. Give me the good stuff. I want the <laughs> real thing. I've seen this religious, you know, mumbo jumbo and had all these rules and regulations and I can't do this or can't do that. I want to be a representation of the freedom in Christ, the liberty, the joy, um, the health, the strength, <laughs> the ability just to be present and, and give God glory in everything. No matter if you're going through a tough time or you're going through, you know, a pinnacle time in your life. God is in the midst of it all. Well, one of my good friends who, who died a few years ago was a wonderful motivational speaker named Zig Ziglar. Mm. And I was on the stage with Zig on numerous occasions. Wow. Great man, wonderful godly leader. My favorite book of his, you will love this title, mm -hmm. and all of you will love this title. My favorite book of Zig's is entitled Confessions of a Happy Christian. I love it. Isn't that great? Now, mm -hmm. you mentioned that you've been through some adverse mm -hmm. situations. So give us a little window into that. Yeah, I think, you know, just everybody's got a testimony. Everybody has a story. And, and you cannot look at people's social media. You can't live for likes. You can't live, live for approval of man. You can't see the picture, you know, the perfect picture that you see on the TV, the television screen, or what you see on social media, because everybody has a story and everybody's mm -hmm. gone through something. And at 17 years old, I flatlined in the back of an ambulance. 17? Yes, I did. What I happened? Grew up, I grew up in a great home. I, my mom and dad are still married to this day, almost 40 years. I was in between two brothers, had a great childhood. I grew up playing competitive soccer and dance and ran cross country. But, you know, you can come from a great home, but if the enemy has your number and he's coming for you, he's going to find a way to try to take you out, especially if there's a calling on your life. And so um, I was sick on and off as a kid, had big tonsils, and I had trouble breathing. And I went and played soccer one night, came home because I had to play the game on Friday night. My parents found me in my bed, uh, barely breathing and incoherent. So they called mm -hmm. 911, ambulance came, they resuscitated me. And uh, halfway over to the hospital, I was in the back of the ambulance. My mom was sitting up front. My dad was actually following behind us. And I stopped breathing again, and my heart stopped beating at 17. I had my whole air passage was blocked. So they're literally doing CPR on me and using the defibrillators on me as my mom's in the front seat of the ambulance. Oh, now, at 17, I thought I had it all figured out like all 17-year-olds do, right? <laughs> I was going to marry my high school sweetheart. I was going to go off and play college soccer. But God just put a big er, a halt to that and said, I've got to redirect you because I'm taking you somewhere else. And I'll tell you what, it was so powerful because I woke up in the hospital and I knew in my heart, God saved me for a reason. I had gone to church on Sunday. I had gone to church camp. So were you already a life. Christian at that point? Did I you was a, a surface Christ? Christian, but I hadn't really hit so rock this bottom took you and surrendered. Deeper. Oh, it not only took me deeper, it wasn't an instant thing either, Ron. I fell into a really dark depression at 17 years old. I shut off from my family. I literally would go to school, come home, shut my door. What was the cause um, of that, do you think? God was taking the love of the world out of me, Ron. Hmm. He was stripping it out of me. Everything that I thought was my identity and who I was, I was dying to all of that because God wanted to do a new thing in my life. And I'll tell you what, it was on November 17th of 1998. I was in my room. I was so depressed. Um, my parents thought they were losing me uh, to depression and they were trying to get me help and I was shutting my own parents out. And I had my door locked. I had this huge four poster bed and I remember looking in my closet and I had grabbed a belt and I had wrapped it around my neck and I stood up on the top of my bed and wrapped it up on the top of the banister. And I just remember crying out to God, I don't wanna live anymore. I know that I can't take my life because I know where I would go. I knew that much about the word, but I did not wanna live this life that I was living anymore. I'm like, God, you gotta do something greater in my life. There's a greater purpose and a reason for me being here. And I'll never forget, I stepped my foot off my bed and the belt slipped and ripped up on my neck. And oh, I so you actually tried to do oh, this. Oh, I attempted it. 
I attempted it and I hit that ground like a ton of bricks and I finally broke on that floor and I wept like a baby. And this wasn't at somebody's church altar. I had been up to many altars. I had been to church camps. This was me and God and he met me in my bedroom on my floor that night. And I just wept and I felt the presence of God come on me so thick. I felt it. I knew that he was with me. And I said, God, if you will save my soul, I will dedicate my life to serving you. I said, I want you to do something so great and put my life on display for your glory so everybody knows that you're real. And from that moment, my little heart was set on fire for God. Wow, I amazing, just began to powerful. devour the word. I began to write in my journals and I just began to witness for Christ. Well, what, what would, now teenage suicide Whew. is, is a At serious problem. High. Yeah. It's almost epidemic in some regions. Yeah. It's very serious. Uh, just, just talk to our audience for what would you say to somebody, just talk to them right now. If Absolutely. they have children suffering with depression or the children themselves are watching this show, what Absolutely. would you say to them? Well, what I want to tell you is that God has a plan and a purpose for you, your life. And you can't look on the external. You have to look unto Jesus for he is the author and the finisher of your faith. You are here. You are called out for your, your mother's womb from the matrix of your mother's womb. God made mention of your name. So know that you are valuable, that you are here. You are here on purpose and you need to get accountability. But the first First step you can take today is to ask Jesus to be your Lord and Savior. Allow him to come and fill those spaces and places and voids in your life. And I promise you, he will take you on the biggest adventure and the most magnificent journey, and he will give you beauty for ashes. Amen. Thank you, Amen. Courtney. And I want to say something to all of you watching also. Uh, bullying is a tremendous problem in our culture, oh, and especially social media bullying, mm -hmm. which uh, devastates many young men and women who are not fully developed and don't have the maturity to resist right. uh, that kind of rejection. So I want to say not just to those of you who are being bullied, but I want to say something to those mm. of you who are bullies. I, I want to say this to you from my heart. I want to tell you to stop it. Just stop it because look what can happen to people. Do you want to be responsible for taking somebody's life indirectly? Of course not. So even though you feel an impulse to hurt someone, go to God and ask Him to remove that from your spirit because you don't want to be a bully yourself. You don't want to be someone who uh, terrorizes or undermines the identity of another human being who's made in the image of God, Amen. whom God loves, who Jesus died for. So whether you're the person receiving the bullying or you're the bullier, don't ever put anyone in the position that Courtney just described. I'm not saying that was your cause or what there's happened. A lot of peer pressure. But going there's on there's a lot time. of that too. Yeah. And girls especially want to. They want to be attractive. They want to look mm -hmm. pretty. They want to be popular. Uh, guys uh, want to feel that they are socially accepted mm -hmm. in their circle. And uh, sometimes uh, American high schools can be a minefield of emotional disaster yeah. and devastation. So. Uh, you as a Christian, I want you to be alert to your friends too. If you're a young man or a young woman and you love Jesus, I want to encourage you to be a champion for the people in your school who need championing, who go through the kind of depression that Courtney just talked about. Yeah. Now, Courtney, I also want you to say something about uh, Jeffrey, okay? Yes. How'd, how'd that happen? How'd you meet a well, godly husband? God is so faithful because I was very young when I met my husband. This was right after I had this whole near-death experience, gave my life to Christ, so still going through depression. But um, coming out of high school, I didn't go off and play college soccer like I planned. And so I stayed home. I went to community college and um, I started personal training. I, I grew up as an athlete, so I had a passion for health and fitness. And God started showing me in his word that our body was created as the temple of the Holy Spirit, that he he was showing me as we bring our flesh into subjection, the spirit man can be fit to fight because one of my favorite books was um, Battlefield of the Mind by Joyce Meyer. Yes, yes. And so when I learned book. I'm a spirit, I have a soul and I just live in this body. It liberated me to know I have the power to choose. I have the power to make choices that are going to bring freedom in my life. Amen. I have the power to choose and not settle for anything less than God's best. And so I was in this journey and I was actually personal training at Gold's Gym of all places. And my husband walked in with his friend and he told his best friend, he goes, that's my wife. You talk about the power <laughs> of no, declaring. Had he met you before? No, he had not. He <laughs> saw me, um, but we know how small the world is. Well, you is. do look pretty good. That well, probably thanks. got his attention. I'm sure that the spandex from head to toe on had something to do with it. I was saved. <laughs> that, I was a little young that, that and naive. at least got his attention. Yeah, it definitely got the attention. The blonde hair, the biceps will do that. And so I'll tell you what, um, his brother actually ended up introducing us because I went to school with both of his brothers. So I knew who he was. I knew he came from a great Christian family, and but I was 
was still very much battling with depression. I was saved, but I wasn't free yet. And so we met and we talked about God the whole time on the treadmill that night and just talked about God. Then he asked me out on three dates, Ron, and I turned him down all three times. He'll tell you every time. What, what he was went the out. reason you turned him down? Well, I'm going to tell you what it was. Well, he bought me a dozen roses all three times and then gave them <laughs> to his mother because, of course, I rejected him. We didn't waste them. <laughs> well, I was one of those Christians that was bubbly, bright, and exuberant and helping everybody else, but I was a hot mess inside because I didn't know I was fighting for total freedom. I was partially free. I was partially delivered. Were you afraid? So, I was. I was afraid to completely surrender. And I think I was very young and vulnerable. And I was just on this journey How old of were you finding. At that point? I was 18 years old. Oh, you were very I was young. a babe. Yeah, yeah, I was a babe and had just gone through this whole near death yeah. thing. And so, um, so through that time, Jeff was really patient. But I was battling with depression. I started developing an eating disorder at that time because I started working at a gym. And they're like, you'd be great to do a fitness competition. Well, that was a recipe for disaster for some little vulnerable 18 year old girl that was trying to figure you out her ready. identity. I was not ready for that. And so it led to all of that. And so on the surface, Jeff saw this perfection, but inside I had still had low self-esteem. I was battling those suicidal thoughts, my personal value all the time while seeking God. And so I, I didn't want him to see this broken thing and he wouldn't want me. I'm damaged goods. He's this perfect guy. He had already graduated you know, from college. He was pre-med, a quarterback. He had his own house. He had a great job. He had his stuff together. I'm like, what can I offer this guy? <laughs> and so I pushed him away and three years passed. Three years passed and one of my girlfriends ended up dating one of his brothers and going to his parents' church. And so I call him up and here's Jeff in Atlanta and he's literally about to propose to some girl and he went and met the family and it was a hot mess. And oh, so now it started well, that Courtney, new chapter. We are almost out of time. We've got to come back to this, yes, okay? Absolutely. I want to hear more about this because this is a great story. So will you come back? Absolutely. Okay, Ron. we'll have you yeah. back. And we want to talk about fitness also because Looking you're involved in that. Yeah. But let me say to those of you watching, there's a great audio set on fitness called how to have super abundant energy. It's for the moms and dads and kids of America. So go to choosegreatness.com. It fits totally what you're talking about and order how to have super abundant energy, a great audio set. So remember this, you have an opportunity to learn from our guests to learn from their example, to learn from their energy, to learn from their excitement, but most of all, to learn from their walk with God because that's the secret. So go to choosegreatness.com in order how to have super abundant energy. And we'll talk more about energy and fitness when you come back and you will come back. Absolutely. God right. bless you. <laughs> and we'll see you on the next show.